Good morning, everybody. It is Jesus risen from the dead who is here as we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So may the grace and peace of Jesus Christ and the love and healing mercy of God the Father and all the gifts of their Spirit be with each one of you. The answer that the rich young man receives from Jesus in today's Gospel is certainly more than he expected when he asked the question. Perhaps more than we expect as we come and gather for Mass today. A challenge that nothing, no one more important than the gift of God's wisdom and love in Jesus, than the gift of the hope for mercy and eternal life we have in Him. But for the times when the world has seduced us, and especially the lure of material things, our earthly prestige has controlled us, we ask forgiveness now. Lord Jesus, though you were rich, you became poor for us. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, that from your poverty we might be enriched for eternity. Christ, have mercy. And so, Lord, you desire that the church, your body, should be a poor church for the poor. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us together to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go ahead of us and follow after us, and make us always determined to carry out the good works of the gospel right up to heaven's gate. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And if you would be seated, we receive the treasure of God's word. reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and prudence was given me. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her. Nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold, in view of her, is a little sand. And before her, silver is to be accounted mire. Beyond health and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet, all good things together came to me in her company, and countless riches at her hands. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord. You can write, may the Lord be in your mind, on your lips, and in your heart, that you might worthily and well proclaim this holy gospel, and by your preaching inspire the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He replied and said to him, Teacher, all of these I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go, sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus again said to them in reply, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. Peter began to say to him, We have given up everything and followed you. And Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, there is no one who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the gospel who will not receive a hundred times more now in his present age houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and eternal life in the age to come. The Gospel of the Lord. It was some time ago before one of the weekend masses that I was out greeting folks as they were coming in. And a young boy comes up to me all excited. Deacon Mike, he says, today's my birthday. I go, well, hey, happy birthday. 
how old are you? He says, I'm 10. I said, well, happy birthday, congratulations. And I said, are you going to have a party today? He goes, yeah, i got friends coming over this afternoon. And it was after mass, as I'm greeting people as they were leaving. And I could see his mother standing off, off to the side waiting to talk to me. Once everybody cleared, she came up. And she says, Deacon Mike, I just want to tell you something about him. She began to well up in tears. She proceeded to say that when they talked about him having a birthday party, he says, yeah, I have a party, but I don't want any presents. She says, you don't want presents? Why not? He says, I want them to bring food items. Bring items that we can bring to a pantry later on and give to somebody who needs it, to somebody who's hungry. And then she began to cry more. And you could just see the pride come out of her, how proud she was of her son. And then she told me, she said, and he told me that the money that Grandma and Grandpa sent him for his birthday and the money that his godparents sent, he wanted to donate that to some charity. That young boy gets it. He gets it. He's doing exactly what Jesus told that young man in the Gospel reading. He's doing exactly what Jesus wants us to do. So you say, well, how do we give all our wealth away? Well, I don't want to give everything away either, you know? I want my house, I still want my cars and trucks and uh, camper and all those things. But I think what God is asking of us is not to give everything away, but to give up things that are not giving us life. The things that give us life and give us joy are the things that God wants us to keep. But it's all that extra stuff. The stuff that we really don't need is what we need to give away. Our wealth. The wealth that we have comes in different forms. Yes, there is that monetary wealth and possession wealth. But we can also give something else away. That's our time. Our time is worth something. Our time is very valuable. That time that we can give to somebody in need, that time that we can give to an organization to help them out, that's what God wants from us. That's the wealth that he wants us to share. The other wealth that we have is maybe our talents and our skills. Again, to help somebody out who is in need. Maybe it's Habitat for Humanity, another organization that's doing something for somebody. Whatever that talent is, whatever that skill we have is, if we dig deep down in our soul and we look and we say, what do I have to give? There is something from each and every one of us. It doesn't matter if we're young, if we're old, if we're man, if we're female, if we are rich or we are poor. We all have something. In that first reading from the Book of Wisdom, we hear King Solomon. King Solomon saying that the wisdom that God gives him and gives us is more precious than any of the gold or silver, any of the possessions that he has, his throne, everything. There is nothing more precious than that wisdom. And when we give of our wealth, I will guarantee you, just like that young boy who wanted to give all that food away and not take presents and give them money to a charity. If we do that, that feeling, that feeling that we're going to have when doing it is far more to exceed any feelings that we have for the material things, for those things 
that don't give us life. It's a bit of old home week here at Lourdes uh, this morning as uh, uh, two sets of parents uh, take up the gospel message in a very particular way, uh, giving to their newborn children uh, the gift of wisdom, the gift of discernment, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and this precious gift of faith that comes from baptism. Joe Herm and Marie Garvin bring their newborn daughter, Cora Ann. Uh, Joe was a grade school kid when I was the associate pastor over at uh, St. Agnes. So wonderful to see him a parent now. We'll be baptizing Cora Ann after Mass this morning. And uh, Amy Connor grew up while I was out at Holy Cross in Bay Settlement. I celebrated hers and uh, Scott Vogel's wedding uh, at St. Philip's soon after I arrived here at Lourdes. And they bring their thirdborn, Emily Eileen Vogels, for baptism today. There she is. And of course, moms and dads, you want to give your, your daughters everything, right? You want to give your kids everything. But the, and, and kids, we'll take everything, won't we? I mean, that's how we are when we're kids. But the truth is, oh, oh, five, five second rule, no worries. You're good, you're good. <laughs> how else do parents survive without the five second rule, right? But the truth is, and kids know it, and parents know it too, that we don't need everything. That 10-year-old little boy in Mike's family, he knows it. We don't need everything. The most important things we need are the gift of faith that comes through baptism. A relationship with Jesus, not only an immediate and extended family, but a church family, a family of faith that lives this faith and lives in this friendship with Jesus all the time. The gifts of faith and family, they get a little one going just fine. And the other things are just gravy. Or maybe they're things that can be given away because others need them more than we need them. And so we congratulate our parents, Joel and Marie, Amy and Scott, in giving to their children today through the gift of baptism, the precious gift of faith, the wisdom and the prudence, the love of God in Jesus Christ. So, here we go. Come on, Amy and Scott, big sisters and godparents. If the assembly would please stand, we'll, we'll uh, share this precious faith. Let's see what I'm going to bring this. So, dear sisters and brothers at Our Lady of Lourdes, even though it might be tempting to do otherwise sometimes, do you reject Satan, all his evil works, all his slick and seductive and tempting, but always bogus and dead-end promises? Do you reject them all? I do. And even more importantly, do you believe in God, the Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth and all they contain, who has made us male and female in the divine image and likeness, and who loves us, each one, the way moms and dads love their children? Do you believe? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God and child of Mary, born humbly in a barn, growing in age and wisdom and grace, to be a wise teacher, a powerful healer and a merciful friend, but for this loving way misunderstood by the world, ridiculed, arrested, tortured, executed and buried in a borrowed grave, but because he was faithful to this loving way, raised up from the dead by the Father's power, and exalted forever in the Father's heavenly presence. Do you believe in Jesus Christ as the Savior, the great teacher, the Lord and master of your life? I do. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit that keeps gathering us together? Here is the Holy Catholic Church, one generation to the next, in communion with all the saints who've gone on ahead, daring to believe that every sin can be forgiven, awaiting the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Do you believe? I do. This is our faith, the faith of the church. We're grateful to be called to it. We're delighted to share it with, with these two beautiful little girls this morning. 
And we promise, don't we, to live it in a way that will inspire them to live it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So Amy and Scott, is it your will that Emily Eileen, your daughter, should be baptized in this faith? And Kelsey and Jeff, do you promise as godparents to support them and assist them in their vocation as Christian parents? And people of God and Our Lady of Lourdes, do you promise to let these little girls baptized this day see us living joyfully as friends of Jesus in the wisdom and truth of his gospel, no matter what it requires of us? Do you promise this witness to them? Well, then the assembly can be seated. We'll give the nook back to Mom. And here we go. Emily, Eileen, Vogels, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You get to go swimming in church today, huh? How about that? That you might come to know Jesus, and love Him, and follow Him, we anoint you with his Holy Spirit that makes you even now a priest, a prophet, and a member of the royal family of faith, the church. And we recognize, Emily, in your white garment, the outward sign of your dignity now as a Christian person, with mom and dad, with your big sisters, your godparents, and your family and our church to help you preserve that Christian dignity to a full share of eternal life. We give you to Godmother now. There you go, Kelsey. <laughs> Emily, receive the light of Christ. Let it enlighten your mind to know the wisdom of the gospel. Let it make your heart tender and compassionate like the heart of Jesus. Let his light lead your steps in the gospel path in a long, long Christian life in this world. And one day when you must face death's shadows like we all have to, may the light of Christ make you confident and unafraid. Let it lead you to heaven. And see it not only in this little candle, but in the words and deeds of mom and dad and godparents and family and church and the rest of us who love Jesus and want to help you to grow to love him too. And so another one, asking for wisdom, asking for truth and life, receiving it baptized in Jesus Christ. Emily Eileen Vogels, we welcome her aboard. And of course, if God is going to give us the important things, God will give us what we need to live this call of faith, even when the gospel, like this morning, is tough and challenging. So we stand now, and we offer our needs, the needs of the church and the world.